Hi everybody, so I said that I would pop on and just do a quick live to chat to you about breastfeeding in the first three days. And there's seven things that I want to cover with you that will reassure you that your baby is getting enough because I know that it can be really confusing. You're already feeling so hormonal, so overwhelmed, so joyful, possibly exhausted, and you just want to do everything right. And if your baby is continuously crying or feeding really frequently, then it's only natural that you might assume that you don't have enough and you're getting a lot of conflicting advice. Everybody who's ever breastfed and all the people who are around you will be telling you what to do and it can be really confusing. So um, first of all, I want you to consider the way that your baby was born. And I don't mean by vaginal birth or cesarean birth. I mean, how was your labor? How, if you've had an incredibly long label and you're feeling exhausted, then the chances are that your baby is feeling exhausted as well. If you did, if you had any um, analgesia or an anesthesia, then your baby would have got that as well. And that might make your baby quite sleepy. If you've had a c-section your baby might take a while to wake up because um they didn't go through the labor process so they're still getting used to the fact that they're outside and you know they also take a while to get going and they either come out really hungry ready to feed or it takes them a while and we always talk about the golden hour and those first few specifically the first hour after birth and how important it is that baby feeds immediately but more important than that is that you have baby skin to skin so that you can watch your baby's cues because they will let you know when they're ready to feed and i'm sure that you've seen videos of what we call the breast crawl when the baby instinctively and naturally moves up to your breast and starts rooting because they've got um they sense with their with their smell um, and with their mouth and they, they move instinctively towards the breast so they, they're being guided by their mouth and by the smell of you and your milk and they're just that they know to move towards the breast. So give them the time and the space to do that and allow them to do that by staying relaxed and just enjoy, enjoying those precious, precious moments and um, preferably with as little intervention and interruption as possible. The second thing is that once they do have that first feed, if baby feeds really well the first time, if it's a hungry, a good latch, and they suckle hungrily, they can they can suckle for a long time. Um, very often a babe will, will continuously feed for up to an hour, which is very unusual in the first days, but the first feed is different because if you high on oxytocin, so is your baby. So your baby is also filled with all the birth hormones and responding to that, and they're probably wide awake and alert. They may even have a little bit of adrenaline in their body because you produce adrenaline normally during the birth process and that kind of wakes them up. So don't limit the time at the breast for that first feed if they really are going for a long time. If you notice they're falling asleep, allow them to fall asleep and then move them over to the other side so if they wake up they can, they can suckle from the other side. But don't you, there's no need to time that feed. Just allow baby to suckle for as long as they want and expect the baby to fall asleep because that's their instinct. It's so comforting. It's the best place to be. So whether it's a five minute suckle and they fall asleep or a 25 minute suckle and they fall asleep, fall asleep or even a 45 minute suckle and they fall asleep, all of those would be normal, okay and acceptable. And when baby falls asleep, I highly recommend keeping babe right here on your chest, skin to skin, because that's the best place to be. And it reassures you that everything is fine, that your baby is okay. They're right there. You can feel them breathing. You can see them breathing. You can hear the little noises they make and the little snuffles. And you'll notice when they wake up, their head naturally like does this little bobbing thing as they look around for the breast. And that's just beautiful and it's a sign that they know instinctively what to do and trust that instinct as much as you trust your own instinct to know what to do. The second thing I want to reassure you about is um, baby's tummy capacity. Your baby has just been born and their little belly is only that big, okay? Literally can only take up to six mils. That's just over a teaspoon. And that's all they need because your milk isn't even in yet. What you have for the first three days is that golden liquid we call colostrum. And don't be alarmed if you um, 
squeeze your breasts and nothing comes out because it responds to the birth hormones oxytocin and prolactin so even if you don't see it when when you squeeze the nipples when the baby suckles it stimulates the pituitary gland to release all those hormones and the colostrum starts flowing so um just once again go back to that sense of trust and the fact that baby only needs such a little bit but bear in mind that because they only need such a small amount they will feed more frequently the first day if they have a very good feed then it's a good indication that all is good and very often if they've had an excellent first feed they will then be quite sleepy and there'll be a long sleepy period which again is very worrying but if they're on your chest then you can be reassured that everything is okay um, the colostrum itself is very high energy it's got loads of calories and all the goodness immunoglobulins and lots of people sending messages um, immunoglobulins there's so many properties in colostrum that we haven't even named them all yet so just trust that whatever baby needs is in that colostrum and especially at this time because one of the amazing things about breast milk is that whatever is in the air at the time when you are feeding your body immediately responds to that and starts um, manufacturing antibodies that are passed through to your baby at the feed so every time you're feeding your baby you're immunizing your baby at the breast and there's continuous signals that are being passed between you and your baby so even if somebody comes into your home and at the moment I mean the good thing about this is that there's not going to be too many visitors but when when they are you know if somebody comes to visit you and they've got the sniffle, sniffles then your body will naturally make antibodies towards that that microbe and pass them immediately to your baby so babies who are exclusively breastfed hardly ever get sick and that is a fact and that's because of the natural immunity then the other thing is that because the colostrum is so high in calories and even in such small amounts um that's why they feed so frequently but remember that it is expected that your baby will lose up to 10% of their birth weight in the first three days. So we expect it. And the reason for that is because they are only having that colostrum. And because one of the roles of the colostrum is to line their tummy and their digestive system. Because the only thing that's ever passed through their digestive system um while they were in utero was the amniotic fluid maybe you didn't know this but your baby actually drinks amniotic fluid when they're inside so the only thing that's ever passed through there is amniotic fluid they drink it and they wee it out so they've got like it's pure virgin gut and you want the first feed that the baby has to be the colostrum that is so full of all the goodness because what it does is it lines the digestive system and it goes into all those small little spaces and immediately causes a, 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 um, a positive and um, healthy reaction because it's lining your, their digestive system with all the right stuff. So the first feed is incredibly important for that and every subsequent feed is passing through but it is passing through in really small amounts so yes when they weigh your baby at the um, if they weigh it on day three then baby would have lost weight and at the moment for those of you who are in your 36 weeks and above what is happening now for the next four weeks is that your baby is just packing on what we call brown fat under their skin and that brown fat fat is specifically there to be broken down in the first three days to provide for your baby's energy requirements so a lot of the energy that they're getting is actually from them breaking down their own body fat and it's physiologically designed to do that it's not that they're doing it because they're starving that's what they're made to do so their energy requirements are from their brown fat as well as the colostrum but the colostrum is is incredibly nutritive and is also protective for them um and then the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was what we call cluster feeding. Now, cluster feeding is exactly that. It means that there will be a period of time, say three to four hours, where your baby will feed very frequently for short bursts with, and, and they will have a really good feed, suckle hungrily, fall asleep at the breast, and you think, great, that was a great feed, and you put baby down, 
and 10 minutes later they wake up and they it's as if they've never fed before in their life and you think oh well that couldn't have been enough then because I literally fed 20 minutes ago but they will continuously do that for up to three hours sort of like very frequent feeds and then they will have a long sleep of up to four or five hours so that can be really confusing but if you understand that cluster feeding is a normal behavior specifically in the first two weeks when baby's still working out night and day when your body is still establishing the supply and working out how much baby needs and if you just go with it and you don't limit the time at the breast you don't time the feeds and you don't um let yourself become too stressed that baby's not getting enough or feeding too frequently or maybe even not getting enough sleep, then your supply will naturally adjust and your milk will usually come in any time from day two, but usually day three to up to day five. And the way that you know that your milk has, has come in is that your breasts will be really full, possibly quite hard, quite tender to the touch, and and they will, may even start leaking specifically when baby is feeding. And you can expect that to happen literally sort of three plus days after baby is born. And until then, just keep feeding frequently and follow your baby's lead. They really will give you a lot of cues of what they need. They are wired to survive. They know exactly what to do. So really trust that and keep baby right here. Now I've got a little baby that I just kind of want to go through a little bit of positioning with you for um, and um, I hope you can see there because what you want to do when you're feeding baby our, our instinct what we see in the movies is you holding your baby across like that okay and while that's a great and really really comfortable way to hold the baby when you're actually latching it can be incredibly difficult because you're trying to adjust the baby with your elbow so there's three things you want to remember. You want to have baby's tummy to mummy. You want to have baby's nose lined up with your nipple. And if you make like a gun shape with your hand and then place the thumb just behind or sort of by baby's ear and the other fingers around and rest the heel of your hand at the top of baby's shoulders, it gives you a lot of freedom and you're not hurting the baby at all. It's a gentle hold around the top of the head. And, and I'm supporting the baby's body with my arm. So I'm really just have one hand to hold baby. And then my other hand, I will cup like a wide C. You want to make a wide C. Don't have the hands too close to the nipple. It should be far back. And the only function of that hand that is far back is to shape the breast and kind of guide it but you want to bring baby to the breast not breast to baby because then i'm continuously leaning forward and i'm going to get uncomfortable and you're going to get stiff so you want to be sitting back really comfortably in your chair and you're going to wait for baby to show you that they're ready to feed so they're wide awake and alert and their little head will be going from side to side if they are quite frantic they might even be making a sound that's like nah, 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 which sounds like they're saying nah, nah, nah. And very often I get a call from mom saying my baby is refusing the breast. And that's exactly what's happened. The head is going from side to side and they're making that no, no, no sound. But as soon as you, you guide baby to the breast, because what's happening is they can smell your milk and they know it's right there, but they can't stop that little movement and their mouth is just going into overdrive. So you're going to guide the head to the breast and wait for the little mouth to open and then place the chin at the bottom and just tip the head forward and then hold and wait. Now that hold and wait is incredibly important because it will take a while for baby to realize that the nipple is in the mouth. And it's important um, for, the, for the nipple to be as far enough into the mouth that it is in the soft palate. Now, if you take your tongue and you put it immediately behind your teeth, just right behind, you're going to notice that it's quite hard. Okay. Now move the tongue further back into the arch part of your palate and notice how much softer it is. That's what we call the soft palate. You need your nipple to, have, to be far enough into baby's mouth that it is in the soft palate. If it's right behind where your teeth are in the hard palate, that's when you get sore, cracked nipples and we want to avoid that and that's why a good latch is so important. So by making sure that I'm holding baby's head comfortably and 
confidently so you know you want to be assertive it really does help baby you know they have got more neck control than you think but when you're holding them like this it, they need a little bit of guidance just to get to the breast and once they've realized that the nipple is in their mouth they will take a few sucks and they will draw it in um, enough that it won't be painful and it's really important when you are feeding that um, it isn't painful. Now, if you have a bad latch, every feed after that is going to be more and more painful. So the first one is important, but trust your instinct, be guided, and then you speak to the midwife or whoever's in the hospital or ward with you to just check your latch and then notice how it feels. Notice how it feels and how it looks. And you want baby's mouth to be wide like a a little fish with their little lips um, turned down and once baby's got a nice sucking rhythm then you can really lean back and you can bring your hand around and get comfortable and you could even drink a cup of tea or whatever but keep baby's head nice and close to your breast don't let them slip back and start pulling the nipple out because once again that is a, a loose latch and will hurt you now there's another position that works equally well and if I had to, if this position was working really well and I wanted to change to go from this breast to the other one, what I could do is literally just move baby all the way around. So it's still kind of tummy to mummy, still going to line the nipple up with, babe, uh, with baby's nose. And then same thing, I'm still using the opposite hand to shape my breast and waiting for baby's little head to do its little thing, wait for the gape and just tip baby on. And make sure that you've got a cushion under your arm to support you. And this position we call the football hold. And it works particularly well for moms who have quite big breasts because they can get the hand under lift just enough to bring baby on. But it, everybody is different. Um, so that's the cross hold. And then I'm not going to show you side lying um, because I think these are the two most commonly used ones and the ones that you're probably going to use. Um, for your first couple of feeds but um, give yourself a lot of time to get it right and make sure that you've got somebody who can really guide you and the last thing before I forget is um, checking the output so the way that you know baby is getting enough is by what is coming out so if it's going in it's going to come out if there's lots coming out we know that there's enough going in but in the first couple of days if your baby's only if their belly is only that size and they only make getting six mils at a time then we're not going to get that much out so on day one if baby only had one or two wheeze that would be okay and the poo would be that thick dark black sticky poo that we call meconium and I'd expect baby to have one big one like that and then a few little smudges after that on day two your baby's uh, capacity is a little bit more, so two to three wee or wet nappies would be normal on day two, and they might still be passing some of the meconium, but there won't be that much poo. On day three, you can expect to start seeing more wee and wet nappies as your milk comes in, and then you'll notice every day after that, your baby will start peeing more and you, the poo will change from being that dark, black, sticky meconium to being a watery, quite yellow with like little seeds in it. Um, and that's a breast, typical breast milk stool is watery, yellow and seedy. And by the time your milk supply and flow is established, very often in those first weeks, every time you feed, babies like weeing and pooing at the same time. So in one end and out the other. And you can gauge how much they're getting in by how much is coming out. So if you're continuously changing nappies, even if you're feeding frequently, you can rest assured that baby is actually getting enough. So those were the things I wanted to talk about was baby's tummy capacity, bearing in mind um, how your birth experience was to gauge baby's behavior. The importance of the first feed and that that golden hour and skin to skin um, not being too concerned if baby is overly sleepy or feeding frequently all of those would be normal remembering that colostrum is all about energy and it comes out in small amounts and baby does need lots of little bits 
and then watching output and being mindful of cluster feeding. So I hope that helps you and um, gives you a bit of an indication. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments. And um, I know there's a lot of you who are due in the next couple of, of days and weeks. So if you do need any help, then please reach out and then I can. Um, thank you so much. I've got a little heart. And um, we can organize a consultation because all the consultations that I'm doing at the moment are pretty much online and virtual. And it's amazing how much I am able to help you and see even on a virtual consultation um, and guide you with your latch and the positioning and just reassure you that everything is okay when I take into account how your birth experience was, what the first feed was like and what's going on. So, and I think, just check in the files section because I think that I have uploaded something about the um, breastfeeding in the first days. So have a look there. Hope you all have a lovely, lovely day and I will see you in the week.